Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today we're gonna to do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. Uh, we're gonna work through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities ETFs that I follow. Uh, if you guys want to follow what I'm doing, you can check out finding-value.com, uh, become a platinum member, join our community. Uh, we are talking about opportunities all the time, finding new opportunities. And uh, we also talk about opportunities here in, this, in these updates as well uh, in terms of sectors. So let's dive in. Let's take a look and I'll give you my financial opinions around all this. So we've got the DXY. The DXY has been in a battle here, uh, basically between buyers and sellers in that circle there. You can see rapid buying pressure on the left-hand side, rapid selling pressure on the right-hand side. We also have a little reversal candlestick here in the short, short term, which is the um, hammer candlestick. And we're getting uh, wicks on the bottom of these past two trading days. So that could reverse up a little bit. Uh, we'll have to see if it just does one of these and rolls back over. But the dollar could see a little bit of a bounce here in the short term. I'm um, looking at yields, the 10 year yield rocketing lower down 2.74% on the 10 year. And this does look like it could continue to the downside. So we've got lots of selling, I should say lots of pressure, downward pressure on yields. And then we've got another one here. This is a, a bearish engulfing, which means we generally go lower with yields. And if this continues lower, if we continue to, to, to compress down here, uh, which it could, we very well could. Uh, that means that bond prices are going up. People are running to bonds. They're afraid of a potential slowdown in the markets. We should see gold, silver go higher. Th those are the types of conditions um, that are like that. And it does look like that is going to continue to the downside for yields. The 30 year yield also down a little bit lower, not as drastic as the 10 year. But that came back down a little bit. The 10 year was down a lot more than the 30 year. So we have, quote, a normalization or the curve is uninverting, which is great for precious metals. Now, if we look at this, we kind of back out. We could say that maybe this is the Batman pattern that is forming and that we head lower. Uh, if that is the Batman pattern and we head lower in yields, well, then bond prices will go up. And uh, I think that we could see precious metals do some good things too. That's what we should see as evidence or justification for that to happen. The, T the bond prices, TLT, was sideways today. Still looking all right, though. And we'll see if we try to break on and move up higher here for bond prices. A uh, big picture view on this, just to kind of show you what I think might happen. I think we're going to go higher, and then we're going to revert and come back down. But I think it's going to go up for a, a period of time and people are going to be afraid. And I think rates, <clears throat> rates will come back down here probably at some point. Um, I don't know the exact timing of it. Uh, and things will slow down in the markets. TYX, TNX ratio, uh, it's jumping higher today. There we are jumping higher. I put this trend line in there. And it does look like we're ready to go on higher. Uh, what that means is that the curve could potentially normalize. Uh, the markets slow down, people run into bonds, and then we get a period where maybe there is a recession or a contraction or slowdown in the markets. And this is generally the time to be long uh, precious metals, gold and silver. Uh, if, we were, if we were long... Um, we are along this this time for precious metals, and it looks like this is ready to go higher as well. Uh, so, yeah, I think PMs look pretty good. Uh, looking at the CRB index, we were slightly higher today, up 0.4%. Doesn't look too bad, but we do have a lot of selling pressure before this coming back down here. So are we going to come back up and then kind of just roll back over? Yeah, it's got a high probability of happening. Um, and we could come back up like that because we've broken through this support area. So looking at this, commodities do have some downside potential 
here in the short, medium term, where we could come back up, roll over, and sell off to the downside. And we could have another leg lower <clears throat> in commodities in the, sh in the short term, short to medium term. Because the market <clears throat> does look like it is slowing down. The CRB to S&P 500, this still looks good. Um, where commodities could outperform the S&P 500. But in a down move, <clears throat> the S&P 500 could go down quite a bit. So right now we are seeing that slowdown, I think. And that TYX, TNX ratio is validating that to some extent. Gold, with that ratio doing what it's doing and the curve normalizing, we were higher today. And is this going to be sustainable? Are we going to continue higher? Are we going to move sideways? Um, we're almost at $2,000 an ounce. Now, we've got a gigantic pattern in gold. Um, it's this pattern basically here where it's a cup and handle pattern. And if we're breaking out and, and rolling higher, we have a long way to go higher if we do a projected move on this. So basically, the projected move is that guy projected on top. And if we were to go up and take a look, I would say at least maybe $2,700 is a potential there. Um, logarithmic, it would be even bigger uh, as on a logarithmic, I bet you, I bet you it's going to be a pretty, pretty large up move in logarithmic here, about 34, 3,500 bucks logarithmic. And it does look, from a monthly candlestick, pretty strong for a move on higher for gold. So that looks really good because we've got alignment with gold price moving higher. We've got the momentum moving higher. Uh, and we've got the market conditions signaling that gold is cheap and, and probably going to move on up. So that looks really good for gold. Silver is also tagging along. It is planned. Uh, it's moving up with gold as well. Not as big of an up day today. Uh, and again, we could, we're going to get pullbacks and stuff along the way. But uh, gold's our leader and gold's, gold's doing very well. Platinum also up a little bit today. Um, this is not as much a play on the fear trade, so to speak. But we could see some further downside in this. Um, which I hope we get. It's kind of a, a flag pattern that maybe it dives back down one last time. Fingers crossed. Uh, I do think that's a high probability uh, as platinum does underperform gold in fearful environments, uh, especially those in the short term where people get afraid of a potential recession and the recession itself. Uh, XAU to go ratio. Uh, this ratio it's slightly higher, momentum slightly down throughout the day. We still have a lot of work to break back above the downtrend line here. And actually, we've never broken above it. We need to break through it. And that would signal that the gold and silver miners are going to outperform gold itself. And that's what we're waiting for. GDX, it is up today, looking quite strong for GDX, bouncing off that support level. There's your support level going across there. So if we look kind of a big picture view on GDX, uh, we can see that we're going through that trend, the uh, resistance line here to the upside. And hopefully we can break above it, stay above it, and get moving to the upside here with a big old move. SILJ also um, joining in the fund, 1.35% higher. Again, we're right on that resistance area, and we got to break through all that resistance that we got to work our way through. Crude oil is selling off, and I, I said we need to watch to see if this thing rolls over. That could be and looks like the likely case where we're going to roll over and head a little bit lower. We have wicks at the top, and this is a bearish engulfing pattern where we could head lower in the short term for crude oil. Natural gas, slightly lower. Um, we're probably going to come to the bottom of this guy there. So maybe a little bit more to go to the downside for natural gas. And I think it's going to work its way sideways for a while. 
And it's it's working its way sideways because we're sitting on the cost curves of a lot of the highest cost producers for natural gas. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me, getting sold off a little bit. We had the bearish engulfing yesterday. It is getting sold off. We'll see uh, if we can get some holding pressure in here or if we're just going to dive back down. Uh, but that's what we've got for XOP. And we have broken this trend line going to the upside here. This upward trend line here. It has broken to the downside. And we might come back up and then we might actually move lower in oil. As weird as that is, maybe we hit this bottom here like we did uh, at $100 or so. And then what we would do is we would make a chart pattern, which is a inverted shoulder, head, shoulder. So it's an inverted head and shoulders, and we'll get a big old move to the upside in oil after this pattern uh, basically plays out. OIH also selling off today. Uh, we've got down 2.68 percent we're back here does this have further downside i don't know it's got a lot of momentum behind it i would probably say that that is a probability that it could go a little bit lower we have support somewhere in the range of 240 dollars sprout physical uranium trust getting sold off we're back to support there's that long-term support line we're back there and then looking at urnm that's also selling off some we do have support running across the bottom here of 28.50 or so. So that's what we've got for URNM. Looking at TAN, TAN is selling off a little bit. I mean, it's up 1.5%, but it sold off throughout the day with a little wick at the top. It's still squeezing up. COPX, copper ETF. Uh, man. We're moving sideways here. The buyers aren't really pushing this thing around, but we've got lots of momentum coming down. So I do think this could potentially roll back over in the short term. Uh, longer term, we're still above support here. It still looks all right. And this is generally the spot to be looking. Um, are we going to get a recession? Are things going to slow down? Are interest rates going to hamper growth? That's really the question that I think everyone's asking. And we're just trying to look in the charts to get confirmation of that. Lithium. LIT. Come on, let's load lithium. So lithium is all over the place. You know, we've got, we're coming back down. I do think this could continue lower in the short term with lithium. Um, yeah, it's, I, you know, the chart's not really telling me much of anything here. We're getting a little bit of selling pressure. That's why the wicks are at the top. But yeah, we'll see where it goes in the short term. Uh, REMX, <clears throat> slightly lower. And I do think that will continue lower for rare earth metals. Uh, we've got lots of momentum and it just doesn't have the buying pressure. There's no, there's no balance or step in this thing. SPX also getting sold off right on support. We'll see if that support holds. Momentum's to the downside. And then we're going sideways with the U.S. Composite. Uh, NASDAQ. And we'll see if we can continue sideways. Emerging markets, we're up 1.4%. Uh, we're heading on higher here, but the momentum is down. That's why it's a red candlestick, uh, but still looks fine from a longer term perspective. XHB moving sideways right on support. Doesn't look too bad. We've got Moo. Moo is selling off a little bit. I think this is going to go lower in the short term. Lots of selling pressure. And I do think we're going to work our way back to the $70 range even, which is a potential possibility. Copper up 1.6%. So copper is looking quite strong. Maybe it's just China reopening. And it looks like we could be eh, close to breaking to the upside here. We'll see if we can break. Lumber uh, down 4.7%. This guy's just chilling, going sideways here. And that's sitting on top of the large long-term support level going across here. Iron ore just moving sideways. There's the big long-term pattern. Still doesn't look too bad. Nickel uh, selling off a little bit. Is this the Batman pattern where we'll head lower in the short term? It's very much a possibility. There we are. 
Uh, aluminum up 2.14%. That actually doesn't look too bad. Aluminum doesn't look too bad on the short term. You can see it coming up a little bit. Baltic dry index coming on back like we thought it would. We've got contraction in the candlesticks. It's probably going to pull back a little bit in the short term. Newcastle coal um, up 1.5%, just moving sideways. That's what we see there. And we've got uh, Ethereum moving on up 4.55%. Uh, actually, not too bad of a day. It looks like we're right at resistance. We'll see if we can break that resistance. And Bitcoin's also at resistance. We can see all those wicks at the top. Lots of selling pressure up there. And we'll see if we can break to the upside. Those are our liquidity measures. So gold, I think the market conditions are definitely ripe for gold. And I think that they're starting to turn uh, negative for oil to some degree. To some extent and i've been looking and, and just looking 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 at charts and stuff like that and given tyx tnx ratio if this thing does come back and i call it normalizing the curve on inverts um that could be very positive for gold but it could also put pressure on a lot of other commodities and stocks just in general uh, because of the environment that we're in and it does look like this this cycle could be slowing down some so that's what we're looking at next. What are interest rates going to do? Are they going to continue to fall? If they fall, I think gold's a spot to be. That's what I think. If they, uh, if things start to slow down, depending on how much the slowdown is, we could see a slowdown in crude oil and some of these other uh, commodities as well, uranium. And that's just from where we are in the cycle. I do think they'll pick back up after the cycle for sure. And that's kind of... Where everything's at and again we have to see if these rates fall they may not fall they may get stuck at that support zone and bounce back up uh where i think crude oil will do just fine and, and gold will feel the headwinds of an increasing interest rate environment so we're at a decision point it's going to take some time for this to play out and we'll see which way it breaks all right guys that's what i've got for today thumb up for the content subscribe to the channel if you haven't check out the website if you'd like and uh, we'll catch you next time this is Finding Value.